Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Choose Life. I'm Pastor Chuck. We got Carolyn Bott with Sunlight Home, Chris Slattery with EMC, Expectant Mother Care, Frontline Pregnancy Centers in New York. Uh, Carolyn's with Sunlight Home in Naples, Florida, Christian Maternity Home. And we're all about talking about choosing life, capital L-I-F-E, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. We hope somebody uh, sees that God is still working, Jesus is the Savior, He's the helper, sends the Holy Spirit. And for women who are in unplanned pregnancy situations to realize that there are options out there and people that have a heart to help and want to help them consider the option of choosing life. That's your best option, right? Even, even the adoption option is better than what we would call the abortion um, sure. track, right? So um, just for sakes of introduction, we'll do ladies first. Carolyn, for the sake of our viewers who may not have seen a show before, give us a little 30 second, one minute intro into who you are and what you guys do. And then Chris, you can go after her. Sound good? Sound good. Um, I'm Carolyn Bott from the Sunlight Home in Naples, Florida, and we are a Christian maternity and transitional housing um, facility for uh, homeless, at-risk pregnant, pregnant women and teens. So we do take minors. Um, our initial program, which is the maternity program called Transition, I mean, uh, Rays of Hope, um, is the first program our, our women and, and teens go into. And when they're finished there, then they can move into transitional, which is a two-year program where they continue to um, work toward their, their goals, uh, school, work, um, you know, various different uh, um, educational goals and work goals. And then hopefully they're able to move on either to another program or uh, uh, on, actually go out on their own and start their new lives of hope and, and um you know, light, sunlight, instead of darkness and poverty. And um, we've been around for 29 years and we're still going strong and uh, we're grateful and privileged to serve God in this way. Amen. That's awesome. Chris, you're up. Well, I represent MC Frontline Pregnancy Centers in New York City. Uh, New York is where there are more abortion clinics, a higher rate of abortion. Um, most uh, more po politicians that put their money towards a than life. And we have operated for 38 years in Manhattan, Queens, serving over well over 100,000 women. Uh, we're operating with free ultrasounds or low cost to women. We are operating. Uh, in, in clinics with personnel and counselors and ultrasound technicians certified. We are com competing with abortion facilities that are very close by. One case, just like a five-second elevator right away in, right. in Brooklyn or across. So we're very active and this spring will be Late spring, we'll get and relaunching uh, mobile clinics at abortion. I'm actually just inside of one yeah. that I just picked up in Ohio tonight. Wow. And I'm driving it back. I'm obviously parked at the moment. Driving it back to New York, where we'll uh, fit it for the ultrasound equipment, hire the right people. People bring in uh, volunteers when we can. That's, that's awesome. It. That's really that's good. That's good. And what I want to do, again, even at the beginning of the show, just so people know who you guys are and how we're working together, I want to, again, share one of the videos that uh, we did a documentary over the summer. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to play a little bit of Chris's. We have, I think, three or four that – short video we've done and then we'll do one of carolyn's as well and uh chris and i last couple uh this last week is working on a little 40 second psa uh, we're still listening to different types of music for the background but there's one that's kind of dramatic i like too but um i definitely wanted to get to the edited videos here and play one for our viewers just to kind of see some of the folks that are doing the work and uh, I think if we go like this.
So being a disciple of Christ is following after his ways and read, reading the Bible, studying his word, and bringing other people along with you. So um, I also do a lot of evangelism on the street. This is a, a calling that I have. I believe all of us as Christians have this calling, but I, I spend a lot of time doing evangelism. But I do believe that Jesus is our savior and the children is important. <laughs> and life is there, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it's just passionate. Oh, you have, you have to be more Christ-like. You have to um, show through your actions, your words of course, but your actions, that you are a disciple of Christ. What does that mean? You have to make some sacrifices. You, you talk to people, you reach out to people. For me to be a disciple, um, that means for me to follow in the love of Christ always. And that's just following and that's simple as that, following the love of Christ, being lovable, loving um, humanity, loving the human beings and stuff like that. And so for me, being a disciple of Christ means that I am his hands, I am his feet, I am his mouthpiece. And I have to represent him in everything that I say and or do. There was a holy, a very good holy man who once said, uh, Lord, you, um, I don't have to, you don't have to teach me how to forgive. You've taught me how to love. When you love, when you love, and that means from within, true sacrificial love, like our Lord loved. Remember, he said that, you know, love others as I have loved you. So it wasn't, it's not this mushy stuff. It's, it's truly giving of yourself for other human beings. Because I've known a lot of women who, who haven't had much or barely anything, and it's their kids struggle, and it's really hard. So like foundations like this is really important for people, really, really important. You have to know that you need a savior. You have to know that you're a sinner and that your only savior is Jesus Christ. Your only hope in this world is Jesus Christ. So first and foremost, you need salvation. And the Lord opens your eyes and opens your heart to realize your need. If we don't bring in God's grace and invite him into every meeting and encounter that we have, he is the only one that can change hearts and change minds. We're just advocates. We're just tools that he uses. And so I believe that we, we save a baby by touching the hearts and the minds of the parents. That's awesome. And you're upside down, Chris. I'm trying to flip your phone. Did that? <laughs> flip it the other way. So, yeah, so try to turn your phone around. There we go. One more time. One more. One more. There we go. All right. The whole world was upside down. And sometimes we feel that yeah. way. You know, it's on like Donkey Kong. But first and foremost, you know, we've all, you know, come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. God has revealed himself to be pretty real to us mm -hmm. and to follow. And and that really, that's the Great Commission, right? You said, go make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. But well, what did Jesus command us? He said, what's the greatest commandment?